Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. So we had my buddy Pat um, ask about canning water. It's a good way to put up water. Um, a lot of canners, if they don't have a full um, canner load, then they will fill jars with water so that they're utilizing um, the, the energy in the space when they are canning by adding water, you know, putting water up on their shelves. Canning water is a really wonderful thing to do. Um, you know, water's important, and this will keep it good for a good long time. It'll also make it sterile so that you can use it for wound care, you know, that kind of thing. So, highly recommend having some canned water around. Canning water, say what? Yep. So, for the purpose of this demonstration, <clears throat> I have my great big stock pot out, and I have literally just taking these jars out of the dishwasher so I know that they're sterile but if you don't have a dishwasher or you don't want to do that first make ouch make sure they're clean and then you can submerge them into your pot of water <laughs> that really hurts okay so watch that final step anyway um this will Sterilize your jars once you bring it up to a nice 140 degrees. You have it in there for at least 10 minutes. Okay. But it's also the easiest way to fill the jars. So I know my jars are sterile. I know this water's hot. So we are going to take these out immediately. Let's see, and just tip a little bit out. Okay and then put them over on a cloth. Let me bring you over to the other side. Pulling the jars out, we're tipping a little bit out of the jar and putting them on the rack. Now you'll notice that your pot, the water in your pot will obviously go down, but that's okay. By doing it this way, we have measured and know that we have at least an inch headspace over the top of the jars when they're full in the pot. So I have my lids that I've had soaking in some nice hot water. Come on. Okay. Let go. Let go, let go. There we go. And then we're going to take the rings, put them on finger tight. Now, good practice always is to wipe if you want to. This is water. I'm not terribly concerned about it. So... Now I'm going to put on my rings, finger tight. Now the water in these jars is extremely hot, which makes these jars extremely hot. The good news is we know that they're going back into hot water. Okay, there we go. So now back into the water bath they go. A lot of people do these in their gallon jars if you have a really nice tall pot for that. There we go. Um, all of my gallon jars are holding dry goods like beans and rice, so I'm doing quarts for this demonstration. And you'll find that you can use any size. That's the best part about it, okay? So we're going to put the lid back on. We're going to bring these up to a boil, and then we're going to set the timer for 20 minutes. While we're waiting for this to come up to a full boil, I thought I'd take this time to give you a couple other tips. Um, some people add an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar or an eighth of a teaspoon of salt to the jars before they seal them. Um, this prevents, theoretically, I don't know, uh, flat water because as the longer the water sits there without moving, it becomes very flat and so it tastes a little off. It's nothing wrong with it, it's just flat. Another trick for this is when you decide to use this water if you're going to drink it to take the jar and give it a really good shake and that will aerate it which again will get rid of that flatness kind of important if you want to like the water um, as I mentioned before this is a really really great uh, way to save water for emergencies um, if you have somebody that has an injury a cut or something like that some sterile water is always a fantastic way to uh, take care of it so that you're not risking any kind of other issues. Okay, we're up to a boil. So we are now going to set the timer for 20 minutes. 
Okay, the timer went off. Turn off the heat. Okay. Pull them out. Now remember in your stock pot that you want a rack in the bottom. Very important. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You can also do this in your pressure canner. Um, you just use it to, you know, use it as a water bath canner instead of a pressure canner. Works very well. Oh, there we go. There are those pings that you want to hear. So these are good for at least a year. Okay. Um, I've never stored them for much longer than that, and most resources out there say they're good for a year. As you can see, they're still they're kind of boiling inside still. These jars are crazy hot right now. This is one of the easiest things you can do for emergency preparedness. Um, if you want, it might be worth testing. While I never ever advocate reusing lids when you're canning food, um, it might be worth a try if you think they're in decent shape to try it with water. You're not really wasting anything, you know? So that's an option also. But having water stored on your shelves as bizarre as it sounds, it really is a very good thing to do. Um, remember, this can be used for sterile water for any kind of medical emergencies that you might have. This is perfectly good for drinking, but you're going to want to aerate it. You're going to want to shake up that jar. I'm not too sure about the sugar water thing, because then you can't, or the sugar salt thing, because then you can't use it, uh, you know, for medical purposes. But with the salt, you might be able to, but it might hurt. But just like this, this is all you got to do. This is it. If you are pressure canning anything and you have extra space, grab a jar, fill it with water. You're not using any extra energy in order to accomplish this, and slowly but surely throughout the process, you will end up with many jars of perfectly good, safe emergency water. Okay, everybody, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And until the next time, as always, please be safe.